Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to graph a linear relation. So here the question is asking us to make a graph to show how 6n subtract 4 is related to n. And they ask us to use this table. If you don't have a table, the first thing you want to do is make yourself a table of values. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through sort of a list of rules, and then I'm going to look at some examples. Uh, the hardest part of making the graphs, I think, is actually choosing how to label your axes here, choosing an appropriate scale and writing it properly. So we'll look at a few examples where that's done wrong, and a couple examples where it's done right. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll put the points on. So there's going to be four points, one for each row of the table. Okay, uh, so the first rule is the numbers go on the lines, not in the spaces. There are different kinds of graphs, um, and in this kind of graph, our, we're going to label the lines, not the spaces in between. Um, the second rule is start at zero. The third rule is to count by nice numbers. Otherwise, the graph is just really hard to read. It's not exactly wrong, but it's really hard to read. Um, so I tell my students they can count by one, or two, or five. Or you can multiply any of those by 10, then count by 10, 20, 50, or 100, 200, 500. Um, but nice numbers, don't count by uh, three and a half. <laughs> don't count by seven, it's really hard to, to read the graph if you do something like that. Okay, this is a really important rule. Equal spaces have to represent equal quantities. So two squares here has to represent the same amount as these two squares here and these two squares here. Now one important thing is that two squares on the other axis can represent a different amount, that's okay. But on one axis, um, every square or every five squares or whatever has to always represent the same. So one square has to represent the same as one square, five squares has to represent the same as five squares, etc. Um, and this is just a little tip, be especially careful in the corner. The most common place I see mistakes for that is right in the corner. Okay, use at least half of each axis. If I, if you look here at my input, it just goes 1, 2, 3, 4. If I put the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, my whole graph would be squished into this, like, just left part of the graph here. It would be kind of hard to read and small. So I tell my students, use at least half, somewhere between half and the whole thing. Okay, and then here's uh, another tip. When you choose your scale, you actually only need to look at the biggest number. Just a side note, if you've got negative numbers, you look, need to look at the biggest and smallest number. But for example, here when we're looking at the outputs, we don't need to pay any attention to the 2 or the 8 or the 14 when we're choosing our scale. We'll only need to look at that 20. Okay, there are a few rules that have a little asterisk here. Um, those rules are true for now. Uh, once you've mastered doing this, then um, once you can do this, then you can break those rules. But first, um, I think you need to learn to do this uh, following these rules. Okay, um, and the last rule which I didn't write is that the input, I sort of wrote it over here in the pictures, but it's not in the list, the input goes on the horizontal axis here, where I've labeled input, and the output uh, goes on the vertical axis. So if you're using these rules, this is the independent variable and that's the dependent variable, if you're using those words. Okay, so let's look at a few uh, ways that a person might choose an axis, uh, choose to label an axis. So these numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, are going here, and these numbers we're going to need to place on this axis. All right, so the first one, let's look at this. Let's look at the horizontal axis first. So the person is labeled 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We've got, um, they started with 0, well, that's good, um, and we've gone up to 4, which is what we need. But this is not right, because... We should label the, the numbers go on the lines. Not in the spaces. These numbers are on the spa in the spaces. So instead of being here, they should put the one, for example, on that line and the two on that line, etc. Okay, so that one's no good. And this, actually, this vertical axis is the most common problem I see. What this person has done um, is they've looked at these numbers, 2, 8, 14, 20, and they've spaced them out nicely. So it looks really good at first thought, at first glance. But here's the problem. It's, it breaks this rule here. Equal spaces represent equal quantities. And it looks pretty good. If you look at this, how much that's 6. And this is also 6. So it's looking good so far. And that is 6. But here's the problem. 
that's only two. Okay. So this uh, this doesn't work because the equal spaces don't represent equal quantities. I would also claim that it's really hard to read because they didn't count by nice numbers. Okay. So that one is not a good way to label that axis. Okay. Let's get another one here. So this one's a little better. Let's look at the input first. They've labeled the numbers on the lines just like we wanted. Um, and they've counted by, they've left two spaces for each number, so this is looking quite good. And the problem, just a little problem. The annoying thing about making this mistake, which is really common, is that you have to erase everything and start over. Um, because this is not enough space. So this was two spaces representing one, two spaces representing one, we're counting up by ones. But here, we have only one space representing the one. So this is too small. All right, so we'd have to erase these numbers and shift them all to the right by one. Okay, and let's look at this vertical axis here. So they've started, I guess it would be better, let's put that zero on there. So we have two spaces representing five, two representing five, and so on. So they're counting by fives, but they're losing, leaving two spaces. Um, we need to get up to 20, and they've gotten up a little bit past 20, so 20 will be well past half. They've counted by nice numbers. The line, numbers are on the lines. Um, even in the corner, the spacing is equal. Um, so this actually is quite a good way of doing it. For this question, it's not my favorite. I have one other way that's a little bit more my favorite, but this is a very good way. If a student gave me a graph uh, with an axis label like this, I'd be very happy with it. Um, I think it's really important to point out they did not pay any attention to the 2, 8, and the 14. Those, they'll find where those go in between the numbers, um, and that's perfect. It's totally fine, okay? They just made sure to fit the 20 on, and it doesn't necessarily, the 20 doesn't necessarily have to be labeled on the axis, it just has to make sure it fits on the axis somewhere. So you have to go at least up to 20. Okay, and then I've got one more to show. You can maybe guess by the fact that I taped this one on that this one is looking really good. So here they're counting up by ones and each uh, two spaces goes up by one and they did exactly the same thing in the corner so that's really good. And what they've done here is they counted by twos and each space represents two and we made it up to 20 which is the biggest number on our table. So this is a perfect way of labeling the axes, the axes as well. Okay. So, like you've seen, sometimes there are different ways that are good, um, but there are also some ways that are wrong, so be real careful about those. All right, so we've kind of got our axes labeled, and now I'm going to put the points on. Uh, the axes, like I said, this takes way longer than anything else. Labeling the points will be quite easy at this point. So the first point we're going to put on is the point 1, 2. So I'm going to go over 1 and up 2. Now I'd like you to make sure you look at the numbers on the axis when you do that. It's not one square. It's until it says one. Depending on the scale we've chosen, it could be different. One and up two. Uh, here for the next point, it's the point two eight. So we'll go over two and up eight. And at some point you may well have a line. If we were graphing the point two seven, it would be in between six and eight here. Um, these ones happen to fall all on the lines, which is nice. It does make it a little bit easier to read, but it's not necessary. Um, so the point 3, 14 will go over to 3. Carefully go up to 14. And the point 4, 20. Right there. Okay. So we've got these four points labeled. If you don't know any more information than this, uh, you are finished. There are some times when you should connect the points. Uh, basically, if the values in between make sense, we talk about continuous variables. Uh, but if you don't know, then leave it like this. And then you can double check uh, with a ruler. Um, an expression that looks like this, when we graph relation with this kind of expression, uh, it should come out in a straight line. Um, and if you look at those, they all are labeled. They're nicely uh, 
they're in a straight line there. So that's just a little way of double checking. If you have a point that's too high or too low, you can just go back and check that you put it in the right place. Okay, um, so probably copy that list down, and then as you label your axes, you can just go through the list to make sure that uh, you followed all the rules. All right, good luck making graph graphs of your linear relations.